And the type of thoughts that bubble up are of two types. Memory or inspiration. Okay, very important to know. Okay, memory means that the Uhani gave the coup this experience, or this coup had the experience, and then it sends to the conscious mind a feeling of memory. <clears throat> These are the decisions that we've made. In other words, I'm walking out of the Grand Canyon, I'm looking down. Okay, in the past, <clears throat> my memory would have stopped me. I would say, you know, I'm going to fall and kill myself any minute. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have even walked out there because my memory would stop me. Because my memory would remember that when I was a kid, I fell from a ladder or something happened. I don't even remember what happened. That I made a decision at that moment in my life, you know, heights can hurt you. <laughs> you know, because I fell. I think I fell from a high chair when I was two years old and broke my arm or something. That's probably my fear of heights came in. But the point is, is that I had a memory that stopped me. Consequently, my conscious mind spent all, most of my later life defending that. Remember the, uh, the rationalization part? Mm -hmm. uh, defending that fear. So, well, I'm just afraid of heights. I'm not going to go up that ladder. Forget it. You know? And with good reason, because that memory stopped me. So this is what stops you in everything that you're doing. When your client comes to you, they're going to have an issue that's stopping them. They're going to have a decision that's stopping them. It's your job to understand what that decision is and not to talk to the conscious mind because guess what? The conscious mind is only part of the picture and actually a very small part of the picture. Ron went over how in life coaching you can set out a plan and you can do this plan and you can do that. That's all Uhani and that's very powerful. And then you can also give the coup an experience of success and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine as long as you don't have a memory that's stopping you from accomplishing those things that, that the Uhani wants to accomplish or your conscious mind wants to accomplish. If that's the case, you need another tool. When you're doing a logical soul session with someone, you're talking not to this being. You are talking to them, but I'm making a distinction here. You're actually listening for this per this being, right? Okay? You're listening for this being because this being is the one who's got all the insight as to what's going on with you. So you're over here, you're, you're a logical soul life coach, and you're listening. Those are my, those are my ears. You're listening to this person. Uh, it's getting worse. Anyway, the point, <laughs> the point is, you're, you're, listening, you're listening to this being. Okay? You're hearing this being, but you're listening to this being. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's a distinction. Hearing and listening. And what are you listening for? Anybody know? Anybody want to make a conjecture? Or a decisions. decisions. Excellent. Decisions. You're listening for decisions. Do we get to graduate too? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Would it be safe to say that those decisions, those are in pictures? They're, they're for some. For some. It some. depends on who they are. It depends on whether they're visual, auditory, kinesthetic. <clears throat> There's a lot of factors that go into that. But you're listening for decisions. It doesn't matter how they communicate this decision. You're listening for the decisions. And what kind of decisions are you listening for? You're listening for decisions that... Created beliefs. That you created the memory. That created the memory. Yeah. Okay? The Uhani is telling you the story. Now... And the coup has the decision in the story. Well, actually, the Uhani has a decision, too. The Uhani is the first one that fed the coup the decision. Unless, of course, it came from a parent or an ancestor, in which case it may have bypassed the conscious mind at a very early age. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then that's a different scenario. Most of the time, we make decisions first with the Uhani. It goes into the coup, and it sticks. The Uhani says... For example, when I was two years old, let's just say, let's pick on me for a minute. Let's just say I was two years old, I fell from my high chair, and I broke my arm. I broke my right arm because I remember I couldn't suck my thumb, and I screamed, and my parents were like, poor kid, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> so, so, I grew up, so I sucked my thumb until I was like, what, 11 years old because, because I needed to. Anyway, but the point is, is that my conscious mind at two years old told my coup, I says, um, 
falling hurts. Bad things happen when you fall. You know? So I made a decision, falling hurts. My crew says, aye, aye, Captain, we're going to avoid being at heights. Any possible possibility, any place that would possibly lead to falling, we're going to avoid. And so the decision was avoid any high places because falling is bad. Sounds reasonable, right? That's what we call the logic of the soul. And it makes sense, right? If you avoid heights, you don't fall. <laughs> I mean, if you're lying on the ground, do you have any possibility of falling? No, because you're already as far down as you're going to get. It's the logic of the soul. It doesn't make any sense, but it sounds good. And it sounds good enough to the coup to where it takes it as law. And then it shuts that law in and says, anything else is just doesn't work, because this is the law. This, this memory is the law. This is what we've established as being the only thing we're going to listen to. And then what happens to intuition or inspiration and intuition is it begins to die off a little bit. The more memory we serve to our conscious mind, the less inspiration we have. And inspiration is our lifeblood. Inspiration is our connection to our high self, is a connection to our happiness. Mm -hmm. So if you see people coming in and they're so full of memories and they're so full of stuff going on, how can they be happy? Because their mind is just flitting from one thing to the other, the other, the other, the other because of all the memories that they've got. So when you, as a life coach, are listening, you're listening for the memories. What are the decisions, excuse me, you're listening for the decisions that created what? The memories. The memories. Listening for the decisions that created this memory. <clears throat> and so what I want you to do is I want you to break into twos, uh, choose a different partner this time, and sit opposite one another with your knees almost connected or connected, either one. And get bring, I've got a chair up here and some of you just get together and uh, find a partner and split up. And, I want you, and I'll give you instructions once we get to that point. Uh, who are A's are listening? Is that what they Right. Okay. Uh -huh. A's, what I want you to do is you, I want you to listen to their mm -hmm. who. I want you to listen to their being, what they're actually saying and what decisions that were being made that brought them to to be with you or to be in this session with you or whatever. Now I agree this is a little bit contrived, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay? Uh, and you'd be surprised; you may discover some things. Now are the A's giving any kind of feedback, or are they quiet no, like before? No feedback. So they're quiet like before. Quiet like before. Quiet. You're not to speak. You're not to grunt. I mean, you can maybe grunt. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, just you can shake your head and smile and do stuff like that. Just nonverbal communication, if any. Okay, but mostly you're just to zone into this person because see, it doesn't really matter how you're appearing to the other person. Just just be intent with that person. This is divine listening. Divine listening means it's not so much concerned with form and appearance as it is as are you really connecting, heart connecting with this coup? Who are these? Who is this person really in front of you? And who is their coup that is really trying to hide from you? But he or she is there trying to also tell you something. Does that make sense? This coup really wants to tell you something, even though the Uhani is going, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Yeah, I don't really want to be here. You know, this doesn't make any logical sense why I'm, why I'm talking about this stuff. Forget him or her, okay? That's not who you're talking to. You're talking to this being who really wants to spill her guts, so to speak, um, but in a, such a way that they feel heard. The coup, by the way, will not open up unless it feels heard. So divine listening is all about complete immersion in that listening process. Once we get past that, then we'll go to the next level, which uh, is slightly different, and I'll, I'll share that with you when we get there. Is everybody ready for that? I started writing the book, and it had way in it, but prior to, to, to my life, I guess what I'm struggling with is, and maybe it's not a struggle, but so I don't see how that's really the answer, and I just see that the answer is that's just... Okay, stop. We've got like two more minutes here, so we're going to go ahead and take a break.